thing that, oh gosh, no. How? Why? What? Sorry for uh, for all the cuffing. I am gonna start soon. I just need to clean up a few things, and uh, something went horribly wrong, including <coughs> something that was incredibly stick. <coughs> God, oh, sticky. That just got. Uh, to on my desk too this is just the worst anyhow i'm gonna turn the mic off you don't have to hear me um uh <clears throat> die very slowly but um be right back and we'll be starting soon
all right let's start okay guys well welcome uh thanks for uh waiting for this pod, uh, podcast <laughs> for this uh, live stream to start i had a really nice evening um actually this afternoon was great too i i had a 13 <clears throat> kilometer 13 kilometer walk uh I'm trying to walk one kilometer more each time I go. So next up is 14. Uh, I had to do some errands for my fiance, uh, but on the flip side, she uh, made dinner. It was really nice. Um, fennel uh, and um, uh, potatoes from the from the oven, and a little hamburger with uh, sautéed onions. So that was actually pretty good. Um, this night, uh, a friend of mine came over, or this evening, I guess, it's already really dark outside, and it's like 11, 20 something, so hence this night. <laughs> so we spent up chatting, and um, we stayed up chatting a bit here outside, and he, had, he decided to call it a day. He's got some work uh, ahead of him tomorrow, and uh, I have the uh, day off, so that's why. All right, so let's get that hair loose um, I wanted to share with you uh, two things uh, before we get into the live stream the first is um, Good Omens Good Omens is a book by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman I can't uh, really uh, remember exactly how I got started with it sorry I'm as you, if you if you've been here since um, since the start of the video, you know my mind's all over the place because uh, something just went wrong here, namely some baklava just uh, spilled a little bit and it's so sticky it's all over this the place it's just which keeps my my mind from. Uh, wandering the whole time because I do have to do too many things at once but I did want to do this uh, live stream tonight before uh, hitting the sack to sort of unwind from from everything that's happened it's been quite a full day it's been a wonderful day <laughs> hey anyway, back to good omens um, honestly can't remember who said I should read good omens but I was a teenager back then, so it must have been a while ago. Uh, and it's written by uh, Terry Pratchett uh, 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 of, of blessed memory. He passed away about two years ago, I think. He's really an amazing writer. He's best known, in my opinion, for writing the Discworld novels. I think I read about 15 of them, um, and I... It was enough for me. 15 was enough. It's uh, not everything is the same because it uh, spends time with some characters in one in a few novels, not necessarily uh, consequently, uh, uh, consecutively, sorry. Uh, another set of uh, characters in another set of novels and stuff. So it goes a little bit all over the place, all within the Discworld universe, and I spend several nights... I always read before going to bed, even if it's just three, four pages. Uh, and I, I, oftentimes I was in bed laughing out loud. No one in the room. I was just laughing. I sometimes grin a little bit or laugh in a novel or like a smile, but laugh out loud, reading a novel, really cracking up, that's rare. And Terry gave that to me. So... Then there's Neil Gaiman, who is a lot darker. Uh, both, I think, are British authors. Uh, and Neil is a bit darker. I really, really love his style. It's more like mysterious, in a way. Anyhow, good omens. Good omens. Here he is. Like Sebastian, that looks like a really nice, solid hard copy edition. And you would be correct. Uh, I really, really like Neil Gaiman. Um, and I decided I got rid of so many books several times. Uh, going to Canada, got shit, gave a lot of stuff away. 
leaving Canada gave again gave a lot of stuff away uh, and then here my bookcase just kept filling up here I got a, a huge bookcase if you if you'll believe it or not uh, and I decided to keep the books that that I really thought was were worthwhile and if I buy uh, books and, and really for keeps uh, I buy hardcovers and I decided every book that uh, Neil Gaiman wrote I'm gonna get in a hardcover if at all possible now since uh, this edition I've had three other editions I know one is at my sister's uh, and the others I also gave away because I told people this is such a good book you got to read it forgot who they were and and the it's just got, gone I know one has disappeared somewhere in seminary I left it out uh, uh, during a retreat I think and it's gone so someone must have taken it God bless them I've read it uh, so I uh, read it at least four times probably six times would be correct Five, six times, probably six. Hmm. What is it about? Uh, this book, uh, a, a very, very brief synopsis of the book. The angel Asirophil and the devil or demon Crowley are banished from uh, Eden. Uh, Crowley being uh, formerly known as Crawley, uh, formerly known as the serpent in the garden, Aziraphale formerly known as the guardian of the garden with the flaming sword, uh, they are tossed uh, it onto earth uh, and they uh, s become friends as, uh, they, uh, as they are the only ones of their kind actually living full time on earth and fall in love with the human race is what I'd call it. Uh, and at some point in time, Crawley gets the heads up that the Antichrist is supposed to be born. And they're going to place the anti he's He's in charge of placing the Antichrist with an American ambassador. Uh, and it all goes haywire. And the Antichrist actually managed to grow up on, with a rural British family. British countryside family. The idea, it's just ludicrous. It's just so far out. Who thinks of stuff like this, you know? Uh, it's hilarious. Now, a friend of mine, a few months back, told me that the Good Omen series is on Amazon Prime. And I got Netflix, I got Disney Plus. I'm really not interested in another, uh, but, said you'd like it well I knew I would uh, I've watched the series twice now and yesterday I watched it with my friend Martin I wanted to talk about it yesterday but I think I just talked about SAS so after SAS we watched Good Omens the series is actually better than the book don't crucify me if you like the book because Terry has passed on and Neil uh, has a chance to tighten things. As an example, one of the main characters, Newton Pulsifer, is horrible with computers. You see him getting a job and things go bad south. And on his job, uh, there is uh, this guy hyping a management training course. And later, uh, Crowley and Aziraphale, the devil and the angel, uh, go to this training course and find the nun who was in charge of placing the Antichrist with this family. So this doesn't happen in the book. Those are two separate things. And now it sort of ties together Newton and Aziraphale. And it's just hilarious. And the reason I want to mention this here is because this show, six episodes, hour-long episodes, so it's series episodes, six episodes only, do such a tremendous job of making me fall in love with who we are as humans. <clears throat> Not just because Neil Gaiman and Terry uh, Pretchen are hilarious, the series and shows and the whole story is so creative. 
but you really i mean it it makes a lot of fun of your faith if you're i am very serious about my faith i'm a real believer i'm a practicing catholic i go to church every sunday i volunteer i believe in what the church says i consider myself a very serious catholic but if you take yourself too seriously don't read the book it makes fun of faith and God why do I love it so much it's because this levity is so apt so good so and uh, it's how God in this book through Aziraphale and and Crowley looks at people and Crowley and Aziraphale definitely Angel both have fallen in love with who human beings are and I can't help but fall in love with who we are as human beings the bad and the good cuz there's both in us right um and all of us uh and the concept of, of evil, while I, you know, believe uh, evil is a real thing, it's the absence of good, as St. Thomas Aquinas says. Uh, so it's not an entity of its own, but it's the deprecation that the good has t been taken away to a to degree uh, out of something that was good in the first place. I believe that. Uh, uh, but complete evil is so self-defying. It also destroys that that principle. Uh, in the, the it really makes fun of that principle too. Uh, it's very funny, and I fell in love with who we were, who we are as human beings, and I can't help but feel that if if I can look at something that is evil and and have a laugh at that and 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 love someone who does evil how much more can god who is infinite in his love accept us i don't know if i worded that right probably not it's late but i i i felt wow god must i i understand God loves us and he's given us free will and we muck it up the whole time but despite that he loves us and this is what that series does to me while I watch it uh, I cried the first time it it ended I'm not afraid to say that I don't I'm not a big crier uh, but some some things are just really touching and, and and I am a sensitive person I'm not a crier but I I can be touched by many things and um, but this was definitely one of them, and it really touched my soul uh, because I felt a great love inside of me for who we are as human beings. And I know I identify with God, who is the source of love and who I know loves us as well. So highly, highly, highly recommend if you don't take your faith too seriously uh, and can laugh at that. And have an ex uh, a laugh at the expense of your faith. You'll love this book. Oh my gosh. Um, so that haven't been said. Uh, there's another topic that is snails. As you know by now, I got a rooftop terrace uh, sitting right here. Uh, barbecue a lot on it, but once a week, not so I have what what is a lot, you know. But uh, got some beautiful plants there. And for the first time, I've never noticed uh, it that before, but since I'm taking care of all these plants, uh, ro I got roses, I got uh, uh, passion fruit, uh, I got uh, willow, a uh, young willow, I got uh, heather, uh, tomatoes, uh, and lots of other flowers and, and plants, sunflowers. Uh, I noticed a lot of snails. Uh, this is the uh, third floor here in the house, so... How the heck they get up here I don't know uh, so you step in in them I think I just... I mean you step in them uh, they leave trails like gooey trails um, 
super annoying and gross. I must have, and there's a little stream behind the house. I tossed yesterday, I tossed a bit 50 to 60 down, 50 to 60. I was cleaning the grill of my uh, uh, barbecue and uh, it's a cast iron grill. You have to uh, put peanut oil on there and then you have to cook that or as in uh, like heat up the barbecue with like four, I, I think I told, I explained that yesterday. Man, did I toss a lot of snails over the balcony. Uh, so they're gone. Uh, but tonight I, I think I've done another 20 or so or 25 already. It's, it's insane. So after this is uh, live stream is over. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna toss a few more cause they're coming out at night and I don't want them eating my beautiful plants so uh, actually grabbing a bottle uh, on the rooftop terrace as I was sitting out here with a friend of mine uh, there was a, uh, a snail on there flipping gross absolutely gross so that's my life here I'm neck deep in snails should, them, should put them on the barbecue maybe oh my gosh all right, anywho, uh, uh, I had some trouble uh, starting um, Kodor. Uh, so it, it's running in the background, but it was acting really weird as it was shifting between screens. So let's hope that works now. Uh, going to live screen. Yep, it does seem to work. Yeah, it's not frozen. Whoops, that was unintentional. Um, we're at the moon Duxun, D-X-U-N. I made Atten a, a Jedi. I taught him the ways of the Jedi. Um, I think whom I wanna, who I, whom I want to uh, train next is uh, Beodur. I really like him. He's got a very soft and gentle voice. And Mira. And you can see both are ripe for the taking. They're completely in the light side and that is because my character is completely light side and has charisma charism and uh and influence over them so mira and builder one shooter uh one melee character hello all right builder still needs a little upgrade so let's do that he's an unarmed specialist and we'll let him fight unarmed That's it. Um, we were shot. Uh, uh, we were attacked uh, over uh, in the sky over Andron by uh, some Colonel Tobin or forgot the names to be honest. Um, and we we're forced to land on the jungle planet of Duxon, where apparently I fought. Kreia reveals that my character fought here. And we find some wildlife, i.e. a canock. I remember them from Coder 1 as being fairly resilient to force power. But it seems like I got the drop on them this time. And I don't think they, they give out loot on these creatures. But I could be mistaken. More. And a panther, a Malross. All right, fair enough. I think I'm doing fairly well with my uh, force powers. And it barely has taken any out of me. Remains, let's have a little look here. The Sith something sort. So they do drop loot. Even though it's ridiculous. You imagine like uh, something small being eaten up maybe. And you find it in the stomach of the Cranach. Or Canuck or whatever these things are called. Um, Canucks. Apparently. Canucks. Mm. Uh, Canucks. And... Um, just just dumb uh, 
but uh, an entire sword. That's ambitious. Alright. My team uh, is clearly up to the challenge. And I feel really good. I think this is the first time like actual new planet I'm on that that I get this wield my lightsaber and it's working all right but I prefer things go down using force powers and I can even use I built this character in such a way that I sacrifice my dexterity strength and intelligence in order to make him very hard to resist force wise and also make him able to, without too much of a penalty, use dark side powers even though I'm a light side Jedi. This gives me, uh, this was, this build was suggested to me uh, by a website while using Coder 1 and I uh, really liked it because I really feel like it can actually be a Jedi Consular now even though, well I am an exile Jedi. Oh no. Most of the ship's systems are powered down, so it's about all I got. That ship may have landed nearby, though. Or it may be on the other side of the moon. So you might want to prepare for another friendly under on welcome. Well. <clears throat> so anyhow, I can't finally uh I am an exile Jedi, so I guess I'm cool with that. Look at look look at this ship wreckage. Let's have a little look. Is this the ship that landed? I don't think so. There is the Mal Ross. Or Nal Ross, whatever. Mal Ross. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. That we didn't even break a sweat salvageable parts let's do that let's see what we have oh we gotta repair our ships so parts and components i believe you a skeletal corpse now this is definitely not a recent uh, crash dead republic pilot revan says we must take dachshund uh and i was fighting with revan uh our wing of military droid carriers are to fly in low and drop our payload onto the jungle moon. Once the droids hit dirt side, they'll seek out the Mandalorian base and pave the way for our ground troops and the Jedi. We're expecting heavy resistance and if the droids can't take out the anti-air turrets, this is going to be one short mission, but we cannot feel if we do the Republic is lost. Alright, wait. Another self control parts, lots of parts and components. A rusted computer board. Fix it. Computer is now functioning. I have next to no computer use, but I know who does. And I brought him with me. It's my friend Atten. Go go at this Atten. Computer use 26. Access remote droids. Access A9F0. Overload power reactor. Switch the camera. No, that doesn't do anything. I'm not sure that does anything, but at least... Uh, it won't be able to attack us. A9 F4. Doesn't do much. Failure. Alright. A9 G2. Another one. Failure. That doesn't work. Access system command. Repair computer core. That's free of charge, even. Return to root net. He's offline. I really don't see what we could do, but we, at least we scored a few XP. That's nice. Some non combat XP. That was fun. And 
as I like, we did everything here we could. There he is. Here's the remote droid. Reactivate the droid. I can do this really well. Leave it alone. And we overloaded his reactor core. That's not good. He could have helped us really well. Oh uh, well. It's not like we really needed the health. Is right. what I'm thinking? These jungles are filled with long narrow yeah. paths, dumb beasts that just keep charging at you. Hmm. This place is perfect for mines. The carcasses were worth anything, you could make a fortune. So there are mines, else they would not have used that cutscene. That means someone with a high awareness might come and use. Uh, I got 14 myself. Uh, Mira's got 22, but Beodur is actually the best. Sadly, let him repair that droid. The droid engages its patrol mode. Good. 1170 XP. That's pretty good. Isn't that, isn't that good? This won't take long. Builder. A skeleton corpse. Detonator claws. That's they're really prepping us for taking care of these mines. The remote droid. Because the detonator claws will give you some orbital fighting just ended. That Colonel Tobin stirred up a mine ox nest when he took a shot at us. Ooh. We'll miss you, Adam. I guess he. All right. Another cannock. Still no mine. Ready? Yet another one. I'm just gonna take care of these mines already. Is there, are there any remains? There are remains, and this will yield me a Ryloth, Ryloth power cell. Ryloth is uh, something else, I think Star, oh, that's also Star Wars, isn't it? Oh God. Relia is uh, uh, Lovecraft, and there's my last droid. And since we're getting 1170 for repairing this piece of junk, uh, and me having 13 repair parts even after this failure. The mapping function of the remote droid return only errors. It cannot be put on patrol mode. It's locked in fire support mode. That's a shame. And there is the ship that just landed. Oh my. Are these more of the Zuck brothers or whatever they are? Well, if it isn't the Zuck brothers. Sorry, but this one's my bounty. So keep those weapon barrels pointed down. Red made small female. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you hunting me? Can we make it deal? Who are you? The Zanti Zug. Very effective, very famous, and very dead. If you keep <laughs> Good. quiet, small female, we shall speak at you with our weapons after we've taken this one from you. You really think you can take Amira? Good luck. She's a real bouncer hunter. I love that. Sweet talk isn't gonna make me change my mind about you, Jeffrey. Zanti, I've never heard of you. We will educate it shortly. Uh, why are you hunting me? Well, we already knew that, right? There's no way I'm going to surrender to you. The bounds are still quite large, even if you are damaged to life. Let's attack my brothers. Influence gains Mirad. 
Because I told her she's a real bounty hunter. It's uh, kind of uh, frustrating. Look at me blocking those blaster shots. Uh, what was I going to say? It's kind of frustrating that we're alerted to these mines. We find the gloves that they carry the mines. It almost looks like I, I got this thing in easy mode, right? Doesn't it? Or did I just build my characters that well and equip them that well that I'm just cutting through them like but butter? See, no one is damaged. It almost looks like I cheated, but I haven't. I don't know what this is. Uh, let's have a little look. Uh, gameplay. Level normal. Maybe we should up that to difficult. But uh, I am mainly playing it for the story, so... All right, uh, I'm feeling if we take the right hand side, we're gonna go for a dead end. And I always like that. Oh no, that's actually a way out. Uh, because I do wanna try and finish everything. I like finishing up things. I got the three patrol droids here to help me fight against the Zuck family. It was really the easiest thing I've ever done. Med pack, Adrena. Apart from those HK droids. Wait. My fiance just texted me and she's supposed to be in bed, so I just have to check. Uh, okay, one second. So the fact that she's still up is uh, Yumboma. She's all right. A record. Hidden Mandalorian anti-air turrets forced us to crash outside the landing zone. We lost half our troops to beasts streaming out of the jungle. And the rest of us are getting hammered by Mandalorian emplacements. We are pinned down, cut off from command, and the thumping of the big guns hasn't died down for hours. Where are those damn Jedi? So that's a dead end. Alright, so this here, I think we uh, got everything, wreckage, yeah. Alright, so we haven't found anything yet except the Zuck brothers. Maybe we'll find that outpost now. The ship escape. I will deal with your failure later, <laughs> Captain. But for now... Find that ship. Our ally has indicated that the Jedi hasn't left the system yet. Send a detachment Ooh, to Duxon. A if detachment you find anything, even. alert me immediately. Now get out of my sight. <laughs> Seems like that's the first, the failure number one I'll have to deal with.
Sorry guys. All right. More of these. I'm kind of getting fed up with, oh no, not more of those. Another beast, the beast of the jungle, and honestly, those HK forty seven droids are kind of annoying. Unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. Let us proceed. Sure. Yeah. 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 Let's see what's harder. The, the Oh, one was 325 and the other was 400. Uh, all right, and then there's a Malros. Let's see what those yield. 200. So two Malros equals one assassin droid. And that's force heal and we're all healed up. And there's another creature. One of the downsides of these open planes, uh, they scatter uh, all of these creatures loosely across the field so that every second you run into one little creature. Watch it, Jedi. Oh, There's no. a body over there. A lone Mandalorian. Fresh kill, too. I can't figure the percentage in them still being on this rock. Hmm. Do you think he was alone? Most Mandalorians I know are mercenaries and not the cheap kind. Whoever hired him had a good reason to send him to this jungle. Oh. There may be more of them around. All right. Keep your weapon charged. Yeah. Weapon charged. Well. Mandalorian Heavy Blaster. All right. Let's go with the level up. I hope I get another feat. No, I don't. I get more powers that I don't really want to uh, need anymore. But all right. Let's do that. Powers. Uh, the powers of the dark side. See, I'm all, I, everything I have is, is good. I think this here, Force Immunity, I could use this against the other Force, you know, users to sort of defend against those powers of theirs. The Sun Cash Door, that's locked. All right. <clears throat> well, fun. And more remains. Let's check that out. These are the HK droids, obviously. A little bit, bits and pieces there. This is going the wrong way. Sorry, my sense of direction is like a blind um, hedgehog in a bag. With <laughs> the lights out. All right. Oh. I feel Mandalorians uncloaking. One, two, three, there we go. Hold it right there. Hi. We've got you surrounded. Great, just what we needed. Mandalorians. I'm surprised you got this far. The jungle doesn't usually let its prey go that easy. What are you doing here? What do you think I do here? <sighs> Mandalorians killed many of my brethren during the war. Why should I even talk to you? Oh, that's very confrontational. What are you doing, Undexon? What is, is with Mandalorians in this damn moon? Okay, what are you doing on the Xan? The Xan. Oh. So they 
After they were defeated, this became their new home. I was exploring. Who are you? I am a Mandalorian warrior, and this area you are exploring is on my territory. <laughs> we have orders to escort you to our camp. No! What? Really? There may be of use to me. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not finished exploring yet. Well, I, I, I am 100% certain I will cream them, but get ready to die. Take me through your camp, then. Let's go peacefully, I mean. Look at that. I'm not the best uh, unarmed combat baton. I'm not the best armed uh, like melee combat. I'm a force guy, so this is gonna put me at a disadvantage from the look of things. And then you got this fancy control room. And their leader. Hey. Our sensors picked up your handiwork in space. Ah, they I like that I thought, huh? Leader of the Mandalorians. Thought the Mandalorians were disbanded. Let's go with that. Scattered perhaps. But we're still alive. Alive and rebuilding. See the this goes back, the Mandalorians goes back for so long, so when you watch the Mandalorian on TV and you then play this game. This gives you so much richness, which is exactly why I'm playing this. And why even though this might not be the most exciting game, I'm sure there's gonna be people out there really enjoying this. Uh, I am, for, for one. Many Mandalorians have fallen from the path of honor and are now no more than- they, You're probably not enjoying watching me yawn, but I'm trying to get to Andran. Do you know how I can get there? So it's transportation you want. <laughs> it so happens I have a small shuttle that's more than capable of running the Andran military blockade. Ah, cool. I make occasional trips to ISIS for ISIS information. ISIS is uh, and the supplies. capital city. If you want to go with me, you're going to have to prove your worth. All right. Sounds like a Mandalorian thing. How can I prove myself? Figure it out yourself. Ask around. See if you can sure. make yourself useful. Or something that'll show what you're made of. All right. Challenge accepted. If you're going to make me help you out, at least give me something. Let's go with that. Here is one thing. Before your ship landed, we were preparing some demolition work. All the activity forced my men to stop before they finished. The charges need to be detonated before anybody comes across mm -hmm. them, so all you have to do is flip the switch. Fair enough. That sounds too easy. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely hiding something. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Let's let explore. That you check out. We found more gear than we can use, so you can trade with him if you need Great, to another trade post. That is very welcome. The space traffic dies down. The challenging beasts have been cleared from the area, but what's left might still be too much for you. Mm. It is getting late, but I, I do really enjoy exploring. And this is a whole new air. Nothing I'll be going. Oh, apparently I'm not allowed to go there. Fine. I did not know there. Just put a little sign on there and then. All right. Let's go uh, clockwise. Let's see what happens. This looks like it's a dead end. It is. And there's a nice little metal box. Free loot. Let's have a little look. An advanced repair kit. Well, I'm not going to say no to that. You never know. Uh, cryoban, uh, 
cryovenge grenade and a construction set. Right. Sure, why not? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So the Jedi Order is completely dead. You've always had hidden strength. Very hard for even the wisest man to mm. judge and predict. Sure.